Welcome back to Nysora's YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss the idealized mechanism of the pink block or hip block, primarily used for analgesia following total hip replacement. Now, the pink block or pericapsular nerve group block technique is also increasingly being utilized for denervation in patients suffering from chronic hip pain. We will discuss the intricacies of the procedure, common scenarios, and the critical considerations to avoid complications. The essence of the pink block technique lies in its ability to anesthetize the articular branches of the femoral nerve. These branches are situated between the periosteum of the pelvic ramus and underneath the fascia of the iliacus muscle. To achieve effective analgesia, a local anesthetic is injected precisely at this location. In the ideal scenario referred to scenario A, the needle is accurately placed on the periosteum allowing for an optimal spread of the local anesthetic. The placement ensures that the anesthetic effectively reaches the articular branches of the femoral nerve without diffusing into the unintended area, meaning the iliacus muscle. However, achieving this perfect placement can be challenging due to the resistance that is encountered during the injection process with the needle on the periosteum. In many cases, injecting directly on the periosteum is not feasible due to the high resistance even when the needle is rotated. To overcome this, a very slight needle withdrawal, typically about 1 or 2 millimeters, is necessary. This adjustment leads us to scenario B where the local anesthetic may partially spread underneath the fascia of the iliacus muscle and partially into the lower portion of the iliacus muscle itself. This results in an intramuscular injection, which is still effective, but it could lead to a femoral nerve block. It is essential to keep the volume of the local anesthetic to around 10 milliliters. Doing so preserves the femoral nerve and cordyceps muscle function, ensuring effective analgesia without significant muscle weakness. However, increasing the volume of the local anesthetic can lead to undesirable outcomes. When a larger volume of local anesthetic is used, scenario C can easily occur. In this case, the spread within the iliacus muscle becomes extensive, reaching the femoral nerve. This is problematic because the space between the periosteum and the posterior fascia of the iliacus muscle is limited in its capacity. Consequently, large volumes of the injectate are likely to escape into the muscle, increasing the risk of a femoral nerve block. Understanding these scenarios and the anatomy involved is crucial for performing the PENG or hip block effectively. Our recent publication in the Regional Anesthesia and Pain Medicine Journal provides further insights into these findings and underscores the importance of precise needle placement and volume control during this procedure. These reverse ultrasound anatomy animations from Nysora are uniquely educational, offering unparalleled insights into regional anesthesia techniques. To further enhance your learning experience, we encourage you to access these resources through Nysora's renowned NeuroBlock app. This app is an invaluable tool for mastering various NeuroBlock techniques. And additionally, be sure to become a member of our YouTube channel, where you can watch a growing number of highly instructional videos from Nysora's clinical practice. This is one of the best ways to learn regional anesthesia techniques from the pros without committing to a 12-month fellowship. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.